please. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this community in which we live, and we thank you for all those who are gathered here this evening. We pray your blessing on the business that we will carry out. We ask that you would give us clear thoughts and thoughtful words as we carry out this business. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone here tonight. As I said earlier, anyone that wants to speak on item one of old business, we have a public hearing on our budget. You're more welcome to come to the at this time and uh, sign in, and we'll have that in a few minutes. Um, anyone else would like to speak on anything? You're more welcome to come to the public at this time. Do you have any takers or not? Yes, sir. Come on up. You can come right to the podium, sir. You can come, you come to this one. Yeah. There you go. You can sit that one right there. Sorry. We got two podiums. I'm sorry. It's all right. I, I, I have some my problems. Don't oh, no, no. That's fine. I, I want to thank you for allowing me to come here tonight and speak. This is my first time to the city council meeting. I, I live in the county, but I am concerned about this Sephora International Development and the rezoning issue. Uh, while while uh, I understand the property is all in the city limits, we all know that the infrastructure demands are going to hit the entire county. And I, I don't want to see the developer walk off with a huge profit at some point, and we are all left with the infrastructure issues and how to solve them. What I would like to see happen is a comprehensive group of people, the leaders of this community, come together, the school superintendent, the fire chief, Mr. Mayor, council members, board of commissioners, water and sewer authority people, and look and see, you know, what's the cost and what's the benefits. I, you know, I, I don't want to see our property taxes in a couple years go up because the fire chief says, well, we need a fire station for this in the area of this new development, which we, you know, may well need. And now we're going to have to raise our property tax. I don't want the water and sewer people to come in a couple of years and say, we need to raise our water and sewer rates because we have to do such and such for them. We need, I'm not opposed to growth at all. I understand the idea of growth, but I would like to see us do a comprehensive plan of, of what this is going to cost and what the benefits are, and then come to the taxpayers of the county and city and say, here's what we think, and here's, here's, here's how it will work, and here's what we're going to get from the builder of this development. That's all I'm asking for. Thank right. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening. How you doing? Not bad, all things considered. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Steve Mackey. I'm a resident of the county. And as you know, the county provides the water and the sewage and the fire services for the city. And this new development, I mean, the land's been there for a great number of years. There's 300 plus acres that have been sitting there. It was acquired by a speculator many, many years ago who thought he'd sit on it for a while and flip it. Uh, but of course, the way the economy and things went, that didn't go so well. So they're trying to present all these wonderful plans that look really nice, and these watercolor diagrams and pictures, and, and talk about how wonderful it's going to be. The unintended consequence, I think, once you take some pragmatic thought and understand that, the water and sewage department today loses about 30% of everything they try to, to uh, pump through to its customers. We're using a SPLOS, 70% of the county SPLOS money, is going to fix that water infrastructure in the county today. There's a tremendous amount of heavy lifting that needs to be done before our water and sewage infrastructure can actually handle something that they're considering to do over at the 4A construction site over there, the 300 plus acres. I think that we would find ourselves in one of these oh dear, oh God moments if we actually go through it. The unintended consequences and the burden that you will put on the taxpayers of not only 
the water people who have to pay for the water, because their water rates will go up. It's not a matter of fact if, but it will go up. The other thing is the taxpayers are going to have to burden another school system. They're going to have to burden another fire department station. There's going to be a tremendous amount of money that's going to have to be spent to support it. Now, you folks will get a tremendous amount of revenue because you're going to have this new office complex, light industrial, high-density apartment complexes that will give the city a lot of revenue. But the county, ultimately speaking, will have to pick up a huge tab and that, of course, will trickle down to people leaving the county. I know that I would consider it if my taxes double, because we're going to have to do something like that. And I think there will be unintended consequences that, in the long haul, will be detrimental to the city and the county. <coughs> so I would like to hope that you don't rush to this decision. The land's not going anywhere. The owner's not going anywhere. Let's stop and take a sober breath and figure out What's pragmatically the best for everyone? <clears throat> I think that we should treat that landowner with respect. I think he should be part of the dialogue. But I think the dialogue should include more of the county and city leaders in order to serve the people best. Thank you, sir. Thank you much. Anyone else? You. Um, just kind of a side note for the sporting development issue. The total parcel they have, I'm not seeing anything that tells us what they're going to do with the rest of it. They've already got 200 acres that already zoned for multi. What are they going to do with that? When are they going to do something with it? Y'all going to pry us with that? No, that's a public comment. You can, make, yeah. you can ask a question. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm proposing rhetorically a question. Sure. And as you sit here trying to make the decision tonight, you have that 200 acres that's already been zoned, then you have 308 acres more, which the, the, the ARC has already said is a, a, a project of regional importance. So, when looking at that, then you have the additional land they have they're going to develop. Have y'all seen the plans for that? And quite frankly, think run about it, they don't make a hell of a lot of money if you saw the plan. Because once tonight they get the zone, I can tell you on the speed dial or the text message will go, we've got the zone. And they can sell the property to anybody they want. And the quality of conversations you've had, the close encounters you've had about this, really, it really just depends on how long you've known this developer, this builder. I don't think y'all have any long-term relationship with these folks. So once you give that okay for 308 acres more, we're going to have a problem. What I'd like us to see do is this. I'm not too much in the governmental affairs, so forgive me on that part of it. Just practical. If we save the decision tonight, have an opportunity for the county officials, and by the way, the chairman of Rockdale County, uh, uh, quite frankly, this issue with the water and the wastewater is a real problem. If they want to really, if you guys really, really want to get that built, and they really want to get it built, they're going to need to work a lot closer with the county because right now the, the availability of wastewater as of last night is a huge question mark. And so if, if we really want to start that development and start pulling things in together and making it develop, the county's going to have to be a much closer partner because right now the chairman was really pretty much in the dark. He assumed a whole lot of stuff. So at this point, I'd rather y'all just stay. Let's look at it a little bit later. Put good heads together, do something a lot better than we're trying to do tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Okay. One more. Yes, ma'am. Come on up. I just want to remind you, I have two minutes. I'll yes. give you a little leeway. I'll make it, I'll make it quick. Oh, that's fine. you got two minutes. Okay. <laughs> Stretch it out. It's all slow. Good evening, Mayor, Councilman. I'd like for you to take a moment and step back and just take serious consideration of what you're about to do and the decision before you. Um, they have property, yes. They have current zoning. They can do some things with it, yes. But to give them more, higher density because... Uh, their shopping center um, idea doesn't work, 
is that really the best thing for our community? And when you say lovely little townhomes and, and cute little homes, let's get real about it. Zero lot line homes. Zero lot line homes. And the words that I kept continually heard out of their mouth this last time we, we came before you was uh, depending on the market. Contingent on the market. Based on the market. You guys talked about um, build out and you wanted to see certain things being built out first and certain things being built out at the same thing as others, at the same time as others. And they said, yes, we're willing to do that. Well, heck yeah, me too, if I'm there in their shoes, I say that same thing. But they contingent it upon uh, what the market Don't will bear. Don't bear that in mind. Do we really want a lot more rental houses? Uh, another One other comment is <clears throat> that I, I do think uh, senior housing is needed. Reality check. To say, I'm, I'm planning to put senior housing in here, but your, 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 your zoning is for uh, multifamily and zero lot line houses. That's not senior housing. That's not zoning that's specifically dedicated to senior housing. So, guess what? Depending on what the market will bear, there's your answer. So, I too would request respectfully that you back up, that you not make a decision on it tonight, that you meet with the county, that you really look at the water and sewer issues and all of the other aspects of, of, of uh, the sheriff's department, fire, everything. Let's look at all the aspects and see what is truly best for the citizens of, of, of the city and of Rockdale County. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? I want to speak on this issue. Okay, David, hold one second. I got a gentleman coming in. Yeah. One second, David. All right. All right. All right. One second. Mr. Mayor, how you doing tonight? Council, my name is Brian Jenkins. Uh, I kind of agree with my buddy Jim, uh, Rob, who, uh, who spoke first, to a degree. However, my uh, my views are slightly different. I'm excited about this project, I'm very much so. And one would assume that you guys haven't uh, done your homework, and I know you've done your homework. Uh, in listening to some of the comments, uh, one would again assume that this is a rush. Uh, uh, I know. Uh, project of this magnitude, certainly you would dot the I's across the T's. I, I would think that you have done that. Uh, as a former elected official, certainly that's part of my job, and certainly I know it's part of your job. Uh, what I would love very much to see is not necessarily more leaders involved, but more community people involved. Uh, I'd love very much to see that, because I think that plays an integral role in selling the project. Because if you can't market this to the people, then there's a major problem, not just to the elected officials but to the people. Uh, moreover, I also like to uh, make mention uh, in terms of the job opportunities associated with this. Uh, there are tremendous job opportunities associated with this that the county can certainly take advantage of. But one more piece, the developer also has a stake in this county. You know, this isn't a, a developer that, uh, and I haven't met the person, but this, I, I, would, yeah, I, I, I venture to say that this isn't a person uh, that owns that much land and, and has no connection to Rockdale County. Uh, so I welcome this, and I commend you all for the work that you guys are doing. I commend you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. David? I'm thankful to live in a country where we can speak our mind, uh, and I'm thankful for each of your services in this year. Uh, a few years ago, uh, this board lamented the fact that there's 67% renter-occupied homes in the city of Conyers and the effect that that has on our community with people that uh, don't have long-term stake in this community, don't have a vested interest in this community. Uh, part of, of the problem that we're having in the community is a lack of a sense of community. Uh, this project will not bring that to pass. Uh, this is a renter, more percentage-wise increase in renter-occupied lack of community, uh, of people working outside the community, and this is just a bedroom place for them to stay the night. Um, uh, I say I appreciate all of you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I do have a little concern 
over the fact that you were on a YouTube video as a promotional um, piece for 4A development before it went to the Planning and Zoning Board and your own planning department. Um, I think this gave undue uh, pressure on those that are paid employees for the city and uh, the same with our uh, chairman of our county commission who also was on that same video uh, promoting this project. Um, this puts undue pressure on those that are paid employees to approve the project and I have a little concern on the conflict of interest. Uh, once again, I appreciate uh, what you do. Um, you're good men, but we really need to look at, at this project and how it affects this community and the infrastructure that has been talked about before. Thank you. Thank you, David. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you all. All right. Uh, agenda revision, Tony, we got anything? No, sir. All right. Gentlemen, y'all got minutes of May 15th. Have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right, old business. Uh, public hearing, ordinance 930, Tony. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, under old business side one, uh, if we would require a public hearing uh, addressing our ordinance 930, which is the proposed budget for 2013 uh, 2014 for the city. It was presented by the finance chairman uh, two weeks ago as a proposed budget. I'd ask you this time to conduct that public hearing. Two weeks from tonight, we'll have a, another meeting to potentially pass the budget. The budget was, and I'm speaking for Isabel Rogers now presented last time, but she based on the very conservative numbers. It was based upon information that we were receiving, uh, best information we could get. We do, let me first say, we do not have the tax digest in hand. It's still, uh, that work is still being done. We don't know what those final numbers are, but based on projections of up to a 20% or more decrease in, in uh, uh, assessed values, we put this budget together. Uh, we propose this time to conduct that public hearing, Mayor, and when we have that further information, I can tell you that the tax uh, commissioner's office has been very diligent in trying to get this information to us. As you know, our fiscal year ends on June 30. We've not had a tax digest in some time by the end of our fiscal year, but it looks like we will have that information in hand uh, possibly before our next meeting in two weeks, so we would have a firmer number to base a estimate on uh, whatever type of taxation could be imposed. I hope so. <laughs> okay, I'm going to open the public hearing. Dave, come right back on up. Right back on up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Different subject. Different subject. <laughs> um, once again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I would implore you to make sure that we have a budget that can fit within um, the taxes that are, are, are collected. Uh, up and down this community, we have small businesses going out of business. Um, generally, the commercial property pays a lot more property taxes than do residential. It has been residential, which is mainly in the county, that has taken the biggest hit uh, in their value and not commercial property. Commercial property owners continue to pay uh, heavy taxes uh, at the same time uh, Lease rates continue to go down because of the empty spaces. We go through every shopping center in this in this community, every street in the city, and you will see empty space after empty space after empty space. You can't pay property taxes when you do not not collect any lease. You can't pay property taxes when you don't have the business to do it. And I implore you to make sure that uh, you don't have a 50% millage increase because of the budget. And uh, that you look at all the factors involved and, and take in account um, us poor small businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Scott? Good evening, guys. Scott yeah, Ward, uh, if you don't know me, owner of Scott Ward Funeral Services. Um, much like David, uh, as a small business owner in this community, uh, I've watched the challenge that we've all faced of what we would go back many years and say leadership may be declining in the way that we would like to see leadership building in this community. Uh, I struggle some to watch uh, our renter's mentality come into this community because I personally don't believe those are the leaders. If I could classify it another way to say they're givers and takers, uh, I think those that own things and invest things in this community would be givers in this community. Some that come and stay temporarily might not be considered givers but more takers. I'm quite concerned that we do have a 20% drop in our millage rate, uh, but I'm even more concerned to hear y'all may try to replace that with a 50%. Uh, let me back up. 
Well, I would ask for your consideration to really think about what David's concerns are, small business community. Does he take it? And I think the small business guys have built this community many years in the past, and we're struggling to continue to build it today. Thanks for considering. Thanks, Scott. Anyone else want to speak on this? Um, taking off on uh, David's comments, and these are numbers well known to y'all, but they just felt it doesn't matter quite as well. When you have a larger renter base coming in, they take three dollars worth of services for every one dollar they pay in. That's historically across the United States. Um, so what you're having here is a situation where we're looking down in the future, more people that are not. That are, that are not here working, say, at Hill Phoenix or a new factory we would like to have or a new industry, it's costing us. So that's part of where we see the end county have, have come downwards. Our infrastructure has been our crippled crutch. We need to fix that before we look at larger projects for residential. We're out of balance, we're out of whack. So David's comments are right on point. That there's more to send it. you got just not a budget issue tonight to make. You, you have to really start to look when you go to your seminars and your retreats, the long-term issue. With the county, working with them to get the water, to get the infrastructure, the wastewater, so that we can bring the industry here, so that we can have relief off of these business owners. I would be frightened if I had a storefront in Rockdale County. I would be frightened to have a storefront. Because I, I, the, the, the future just doesn't look that bleak. With home ownership and renters going up and businesses staying pretty much far going down, the picture for me doesn't look good for what you have to levy a tax on. I mean, you're going to have to levy them. So that's my comment is that overall, there's a lot more fixing going on tonight than just making a couple of decisions on a couple of projects. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right, we'll uh, close the public hearing. There'll never be another opportunity in a couple of weeks to hope we'll have the tax digest. We can figure these numbers out. Okay, uh, John, we got zoning case 925. Ordinance 925, zoning case 2013 06, request to amend comprehensive land use plan. General Commercial Special Mixed Use Activity Center and rezone 308 plus or minus acres from the PG General Business District with conditions in the MXD Mixed Use Development District. In, in order to uh, discuss this, we need this was tabled at our previous meeting. We need to uh, bring it from the table, so I move that we bring the item from the table for further discussion. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Second. All right, all in favor say aye. Uh, okay, this is coming from the table. Um, what we're going to do here, uh, we're going to have a discussion uh, on this among myself and staff. The public hearing we had two weeks ago, and most of y'all spoke again to, to, uh, this morning or this afternoon on it again. Uh, this is going to be for us, so I would respectfully hold yourself uh, from commenting on anything we're doing. We're, we're here. And as uh, Brian said earlier, we have been studying this for seven years. This is not something that just fell into our lap last month. And, uh, and the council, I think, from what y'all saw two weeks ago, there's a lot of questions we have as well, too. And what this is an opportunity, a public opportunity for us to ask our staff uh, to ask questions, to drill down on these issues, another layer, to peel back that onion two or three or four more times uh, on this. Uh, Mr. Roper and, and y'all, I might ask y'all also to come up and, and clarify a position only not to, y'all again had y'all's opportunity two weeks ago to defend your position. So again, I appreciate it, y'all, if we, if we have a question to clarify, that y'all would come up here as well to clarify a question that we might have as well too. Uh, so with that, Marvin, you want to come up and just uh, kind of go through the points that, that the council has asked you to go through? Mayor of Council. Uh, in terms of this development, uh, first of all, it is uh, 300 acres, uh, huge development, and the, the, the zoning category that the applicant has applied for, we've been working on this ordinance, not just for 4A, but we, 
was actually, the zoning was actually created in 2001. Uh, and then we've amended the zoning district several times to meet the, uh, the ideals of the city council, as well as uh, allow developers to have uh, some flexibility in the zoning district. Uh, the purpose of the MHD zoning district, first of all, is to integrate dwellings with uh, office, retail, open space. Uh, also, it, it uh, requires connectivity. Basically, what I mean about that is that the streets have to be gridded, and of course, it also uh, requires walkability. Uh, one other thing about the MHD zoning district uh, is that it requires the high intensity uses to transition from high intensity uses to the low intensity uses. And that's what's been really been de demonstrated in the site plan that was submitted by the uh, developer. In terms of coordination, let's say, let, let's talk about the, uh, the land uses. Again, we just talked about the land uses. One of the things I would like to clarify uh, in terms of the setback, uh, this zoning district does allow uh, single family, townhomes, and multi family. So it's not just a multi family zoning district, it also allows office and retail. Now, what was quoted a while ago was that the, the issue that was concerned about setbacks. Single family zoning district, single family buildings in the zoning district have to be separated 10 feet apart from another detached single family dwelling. Now, townhomes typically, they are zero lot line setback. But the buildings, when they detach, have to be minimum five feet, but not more than 20 feet. And so forth with the multi family. Now, in terms of the ratio, for single family, minimum is 50%. There is no max on single family. So this entire development could be developed as single family. There is a cap on townhomes, which is uh, 20%. And then there is a cap on multi family, which is 30%. So that, we'll just want to clarify that. In terms of the transportation, and this is where we've always worked transportation for any project that's been developed in the city of Congress. First of all, there was a coordinated effort. One, if the property fronts DOT right away, first of all, the applicant does have to get uh, DOT approval from Georgia DOT, Georgia Department of Transportation. They also have to work, in fact, cost the city of Congress and Rodney County as they combine companies to transportation plan the city and county also work together to resolve transportation issues. So when we look at any development, and also uh, to reinforce what we do with transportation, we also have the subdivision regulations, which have very strict requirements in that document as it relates to traffic studies in terms of whether or not the property requires uh, red lights or whatever traffic devices or, tra or traffic calm devices that may be required. So. All those issues do have to be resolved based on whether the development is phased or just, been, just depends on the size of the development. We do address those transportation issues. If you look around, and maybe in the past years they weren't addressed appropriately, but things have changed in the last 10, 15 years as it, as it relates to transportation. The way we look at it now, transportation does have to uh, respond and coordinate, has to be coordinated with the land use based on what the land use is off. Mark, so, let, let me stop you a second, just on sure. transportation. All right, so, yes. so we, had, we had a lot of concern on Johnson Road for right. the residents there. Yes. So the, the density of the development, I guess I'm looking at, um, um, I believe where we were looking at was four, was site four where the beginning of the development would start, which would be fronting 20, uh, that's uh, uh, District 1, right. fronting uh, Iris Drive okay, and uh, one. I 20. Okay, so road cuts, and I guess that the main concern, what the residents were talking about in Johnson, was the car camp we had going out there. So what you're saying is that the, the DOT, city and county, they have to meet regulations on that. They can't just dump a thousand cars into a two-lane road. That's right. So improvements have to be made. Now, the most important part of this was that you don't want to have 100 road cuts going on Johnson Road. Right. So, what we, right. We'll get so they would have to be spaced out. And I think my other comment was that the other mobility side of this 
live, work, play communities that I'm talking about, sidewalks. That's so correct. Sidewalks is included in this too. That's correct. To encourage the walking and the right. Okay. That's correct. Not only are sidewalks required, required by the subdivision regulations, but they're also required by the uh, mixed use development zoning district. Okay. And another thing that's required by the mixed use development zoning district is that they, it does require trails and it requires a 20% open space. And the open space has to be usable open space, which means any uh, structure has to be within 1,000 feet of that open space. So you just can't put the open space in an area where it's not reachable or not usable. It has to be usable open space. And to kind of further talk about Johnson Road, uh, we looked at that and one of the things we uh, recommended uh, is that the road cuts or driveways are limited to five and they at least 660 feet apart. So if you think about that, um, that's typically DOT type separation, uh, even before they consider a traffic signal, they have to be at least 660 feet apart, even before you consider a traffic, uh, uh, traffic signal. Do you have any questions on transportation? I think we'll just maybe hit these bullet points one at a time, if that's okay, we'll do that next time. But initially, I think we had nine cuts on Johnson Road that's been reduced. I believe it was seven or nine, I'm not sure. It seems like seven sticks out. Uh, it might have been nine, I'm not sure. Go Going back to the ratio that you mentioned, the 1451 is total for the 300 plus acres. And, and let me clarify something about the 1451. First of all, uh, assuming that we even get to the construction stage, uh, one of the things, if you read the definition of density, is based on net acres, not gross, but net. So the first thing we have to clarify is the net acres of the entire site. That's really going to be the number that determines the amount of dwelling units that can be built on this site. Now, you know this site has uh, quite a bit of uh, wetland, floodplain, uh, and also when you take in consider that consideration of that calculation of net acres, you take out uh, creeks, you take out uh, any utility easements, you take out roads, so you take out uh, ranch uh, detention structures, so there's quite a bit of uh, area that you take out even before you get to the point of calculating your final number. So, yes, 1451 has been thrown out there. We're not sure exactly what that number is until we actually get the overall plan. And whether they do it phase one, phase two, phase, phase three, we need, to, we need to know exactly what that number is for the entire site before we move any further. So whenever that number comes in, then we're going to go to 2030. That's where we can determine the ratio with that one. On there. Well, anything else on transportation? Well, oh, I thought, sorry, I thought, no, that's what I thought we'd do is maybe let's drill down to transportation issues and then we'll okay. leave the land use. Okay. That's going to be the biggest part of this. Okay. Ratios and all that. Okay. Any other questions on transportation? The other than the fact that it comes pretty much at the developer's dime, right? That's correct. The developer will be required to pay all transportation costs in relation to this property. Not the city, not the county, not the state. The developer. They're just going to be on site. It's not going to be contributing streets that lead to this. Well, on site as well as we got to consider Johnson Road, we have to consider Klondike, we have to consider Iris Drive, we have to consider Flash Oak Road. We have to consider all those corridors as it relates to this development. And then also be on the development back. That's correct. In fact, when we looked at the transportation study that came in from the DRI, it pointed out several areas outside of the development that need to be addressed from a transportation standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. One point Go ahead. On that. Go ahead. All right. Now, now, will the developer have to have all of these things in place before any bricks and mortar start to go up? Uh, that's correct. And again, it's dependent on how much is built and how they phase it. That's how much transportation we will have to incorporate into the site. Now, you're not going to be able to get all of it at one time. Uh, that's just not how it works. But as these phase, and we have to really uh, determine how much they, sh how far they should go with this, because it makes no sense to stop at a certain point when you know 
uh, they're coming back eventually and, and add something there. So we just have to make that determination of how much we are going to require to be developing to put in. Because you don't want to go in and put, uh, expand or improve the road network and then have to come back and add on to that same road network. <coughs> so we will address all those requirements up front uh, as we go through the construction stage. So Marvin, that's an internal, um, you handle that internally. Now. That's correct. So, that's correct. Okay. So the, the major roads, we're talking Flat Show, Johnson, Iris, those roads there that would be impacted, especially on. And we will address those as well as the entire roads. Okay. Is there a master plan on transportation put in place on the front end so we know what this is going to look like? There are. As, as yeah, it yeah, I may mean, need assistance for Brad on this, but I don't know exactly what's on the transportation plan, but uh, there's some. Uh, requirements or some recommendations in that plan as it relates to these road networks. It, is there a plan that would be on the front end on transportation, Brad, a uh, project of this magnitude, dealing with those corridors? Well, you got Johnson, Flat Shows, and Iris. Uh, there is some projects in the comprehensive transportation plan for Flat Shows. Uh, DOT will check out and make sure what needs to be done on Irish Drive. They'll have more say on what goes there. Uh, on bike and Johnson Road, that will be done as traffic studies are done and traffic counts as the development is put together. And that's going to dictate what needs to happen to those roads, where turn lanes need to be, if the signal needs to be in there. Uh, and that's something that will be ironed out as we go through the process. So there, so there is a master plan. I guess I'm talking about some, some idea of a master plan on the front end of this on those cars that are being impacted the most on the transportation side. Yes, that will all be discussed with 4A as we go through the, the uh, as they submit their developments, the development plans. And then the, uh, and like I say, the traffic studies dictate what is going to happen to those roads. Right. So until those full-blown traffic studies are done, <coughs> we won't know exactly the traffic counts and how all the uh, the corridors are going to work but, but until in they that, finalize that plan. In that plan, though, the sensitivity of, of, of the neighborhoods on Johnson is, is foremost and paramount. Yes. Okay. I, I guess that's my point. I want to make, make sure on those plans. Huh? Okay. All right. Any other questions on transportation, y'all? Marvin, you want to talk about the war and sewer? Go ahead. I know that came up from Don Day. A lot, lot of them came up to talk about that. Please. And I, I, I hesitate to get into details about war and sewer, but let, let me share with you from our standpoint again. We've been working with water and sewer in the early, late 80s, 90s, and we've come to an agreement, and it's actually been a standard agreement, and it's not been an issue that. Any development comes into the city of Congress, first of all, we don't issue any permits to do anything until we get, we receive that proof of purchase of a water meter and sewer uh, uh, permission from the county, <coughs> authorizing any sewer connections or water connections for the development. So if all approvals come in and we don't get any approvals for our water resources, the development is dated, it's just stands still until we actually get their can't do anything until they say we're okay with it. We have to have that approval. Okay. Any questions on the water and sewer in council? Okay. Let's hit the land use. That's going to be the most lengthy. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, in terms of the land use, if you look at the, the maps, it disappears. And we, again, this the uh, site plan is not a, a definite plan in terms of what's going to be placed where most of the commercial. The retail office is up front the I-20, and then it transitions to uh, some multifamily uh, up to, in, specifically in District 1 and District 2. Uh, and then, it, as you get to District 3, it transitions to some townhomes, and then, of course, some single family in there, and then, of course, as you get to District 4, uh, most of that is single family. There are single family as well as, I believe, in District 3, but most of your high density is going to be in District 1 and District 2. Again, when we talk about the MHC ordinance, remember I said it requires a transition of high intensity uses uh, up 
front, basically when I say that, that will be closer to I-20 and then as a transition to Flatshell Road. Those are lower, those are lower intensity uses, which basically we're talking about single pattern. And again, if you want to reiterate the, the percentages, again, for the single family, it's 50% minimum. Again, on the townhomes, it's 20% max. There's a max. They can go below, but not, not there's a max. And then the same on multifamily, 30% max. So the, the commercial we're talking about is interspersed in one and two? Uh, yes, yes sir. All right. There may be some white commercial that's being talked about at the corner of Flat Shows and Johnson, but it wouldn't be anything heavy. Uh, but there's, it'd be no different than any other major intersection. For instance, uh, Ebenezer Road and, Ebenezer Road and uh, Flat Shows, there's a little a community convenience store there. So any commercial that will be placed, of course, this property is also the county, but it's just been concept talked about uh, that would go in that particular intersection. But otherwise, all the residential development in that area is single family. And of course, just to clarify, the wetlands cannot be disturbed. Uh, the Corps of Engineers also would be involved in this project. Uh, they do have to uh, issue a full, full permit to the developer property. Anything, any dirt being moved on the property. And you can see there's quite a bit of uh, this, this property is really uh, very intensive when it comes to environmental as it relates to the uh, floodplains and the wetlands. There's a good bit of rock on this side as well. Okay. Of questions. The, the, the total number of dwellings that can be built, is that based on gross acres or net acres? Yeah, net acres. And how did you, and you determine the net based upon just a general idea? I you no, no, no. Again, we have a formula that we use. Mm -hmm. we, okay. a, we do have a, a formula. And it does, again, the wetlands, you have to subtract right. all that out. You cannot use that as wetlands. Part. Right, you can't use that as part of your calculation. So we already know that's a, that the wetlands will be a subtract, subtraction okay, from, the, uh, from the acres. What is so, the acres of the wetlands, Mark? Like, what, how many acres in the wetlands? I'm not sure of the acres, total acreage in the wetlands. Uh, the uh, owner of the property may be able to tell you that, but I'm not sure. Okay. And again, all the streets are subtracted. And then from that, and then utility easements and the uh, drainage structures, more particularly the tension ponds, they're subtracted as well. All right. Let me ask you another question. The, the picture is a, is a true mixed use development. I know we want to give the a lot of options. Right. You know, we're talking about he can make a complete uh, single family if you wanted to convert from that residential component. But, but are there any checks and balances to, to ensure that? We get a true mixed development here that we get retail and office and we get some apartments, we get townhomes, we get single family, we get we get what the picture says. Well, uh, let me let me just say this. That's uh, to make sure that we assuming this is approved, to make sure that we get what we need or what we want, uh, those will be conditions of being considered to make sure those mixes are appropriately uh, built on this site as per the city kinds. So the assurance is that the conditions will build in that requirement. Coach, I asked this before, and I never really got an answer to that, you know, that would satisfy me as to, uh, on the build out of these things, I, I asked about phases, and the ratio within those phases, uh, the order in which these things are going to be built. In other words, uh, uh, so many houses and so much commercial and so much recreational space, the green space or whatever. Uh, to me, that, that still hasn't been answered. I, I still would like to know what is the order in which, if this development becomes about, what's the order in which uh, these things are going to be phased in so we won't get a lopsided build out on one thing and some of the other things that are... Uh, it, you know, might not be high priority, it might not be quick sellers, but 
probably fruit to the back burner and might not ever get developed. And another thing that concerns me is, you know, once you, 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 you change the zoning, unless we look at this as a whole subdivision, once you change the zoning, then, as one of the people I just said tonight, then if it's sold to somebody else and the zoning fits, they can put whatever zoning comes in there. But I'm more concerned about the phases, uh, you know, that this development's going to be built. But, you know, what's coming here and how much business is going to be here when you get this many houses, uh, you see what I'm saying, how much uh, a walking space you're going to have here once you get this many houses, this many businesses, right. instead of just going through and they build all townhouses first and, and then build all the stores next. You know, I'm not saying it's all, it probably isn't, <laughs> but uh, I would like to know okay. what they have in mind as to the order in which they're going to develop this thing. I'm not sure what they have in mind, but let, let me explain it this way, uh, Council Trout. On the small scale development, obviously, it would be a lot easier. This is a huge piece of property. And I think because the ordinance is not specific, it just is, it is very specific in terms of, you know, how many units per acre for residential, the percentages, the, the, the square footage is for the commercial. But I think because this development is so huge, the city of Congress has to make that decision. The city of Congress has to control how the property is phased, how it's developed. The city has to do that. Because the property is so big, we have to make sure the property is built according to the way you want it to be built. That's one of the concerns that I have. Uh, That's what the city has to have some say so in how this property is developed. Not only in the current, based on the current, I mean in the near future, but in the future beyond those years. Right. It, the city has to have uh, input in that decision making process. What, what is it? Yeah, I was going to say more of a comment, I guess, Mayor. <laughs> Looking at this, uh, one of the uh, letter R in the exhibit talks about a 15 to 1 ratio built of multi-family to detached single family units. Um, if my math is right, that's only a 4%. In other words, if they could build the entire apartment complex of 435 units and have only 29 single family units built at that time. Um, and I know that the developer takes exception that particular requirement, I do too, but for very opposite reasons. Uh, in my mind, that's not a good ratio. And I, I agree with Coach. Uh, and, you know, that, that until I see something that I'm comfortable with, uh, you know, I, I couldn't even agree with that. Well, if you don't have an idea, I mean, I know you talked about this as well. Actually, yeah, I, actually, I hadn't mm -hmm. talked to Gerald about this at all, but I've actually, that, that caught my eye. You know, it's the, the last meeting, uh, one of the people was saying that. That they wanted, you know, because the question of how would they develop, and they said we want to show a little bit of everything so people can see. We want to see some retail office, we want to see some apartment, we want to see townhome, we want to see single family, so they can see what it's going to look like. And then the, what, whatever drives one, if you get more uh, residential, then that may drive the retail, and then as the retail gets bigger, then that may drive more residential, and, and different components are growing based upon whatever the market seems to want. But uh, that's what was said needed to be done, I would much rather have an ordinance dictate how it gets done. And that's kind of what I think Gerald Coach is saying. I, that all sounds good, but it would, I, I'd much rather have a document that says how this is phased in versus what somebody says how they want to phase it in. And, and not to say this, do, 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 but I'm just saying, there'll be quick flexibility. But I did some some math, Gerald, and uh, the 15 to 1 ratio, I didn't I didn't care for that either. So I did, I did it in, a, in my, and I had spend a lot of time on this, but well, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is pre primitive math, but I did 
Man, I'm just going to bounce this off. We've seen your map. Yeah, I know. I think you the water, okay? Uh, I did a 10, 10 to 1 ratio for the first 50% of the, the total apartments that could be built, okay? And then I did 2 to 1 for the next 25% and a 1 to 1 the last 25%. And that way, you mentioned 20, 29 homes, by the time, if you did it that way and all the apartments got built, they would get built over that period of time, but you'd have 178 homes, which is still far less than the 700 that could be built. But at least it's, it's a step process as far as not getting one component out front. It needs to be a balanced, a balanced growth in this area. Now, that may, that's just some numbers that I ran. I don't know whether, you know, 10 to 1 may not be the right number, 2 to 1, but the percentages, you know, percent, 25 percent. But the point is, I think something like this would would give us the control in the ordinance, and yet still give the, the developer some flexibility in how he does things. It's going to be market driven. I mean, you know, if people love townhomes, I guess they're going to build a bunch of townhomes. I mean, no no yard to cut, no gutter to clean. I mean, this is they, they're great. You know, maybe single family, maybe the maybe the small lots aren't going to be uh, as important. Maybe people are going to want a little bit bigger, not a big lot. But a little bit bigger lot, you know, the, the number of single family uh, units may go down based on what the demand is, what people want. Uh, but what I want this document to, to, to have enough re restrictions, if you will, so we can have the control that we want, and yet still give them the ability to, to build what they want to build within, within our guidelines. Right. And we're looking at the big picture. Okay? Any other questions? Any other comments on that, John? Been quiet over there. I've been paying attention. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, there, there are a lot of ways we can probably do that in the document. I think so that could be accepted for both sides. Where's the commercial ratio? Pull this, Mark. I believe what was discussed uh, is that the uh, uh, ratio of 2,500 square feet of gross lease for office retail floor, floor space to every five dwelling units. Page 14. I got you. That's what was discussed. 2,500 square feet of gross lease for office retail space to every five dwellings. So that's any dwelling, but family, townhome, same family. So that's the, that has to do with the commercial part. Commercial part of the development. Those accepted numbers as far as the industry standards kind of, for those numbers uh, We didn't check the industry, but we based it on actually what was proposed to be built for the site. Okay. So we kind of got to pull those well. numbers from the applicant data. Gotcha. Any questions on that, on the commercial retail side? Anything else y'all have questions, Anthony? No? Just, just one aside. One of the questions that's been raised is about the school system. And I don't know if you were planning, but I did notice that the school superintendent and one of the board members here this evening, I don't know if you were planning to ask if they had any, any, uh, anything to weigh in on. I'm sorry. Let's read the note. What is Rich in Wales or here? Right. Um, Rich, uh, obviously this impacts you know, the total built out. I don't know if y'all have any comments y'all want to make. I know y'all uh, went here two weeks ago, and, uh, but uh, if you want to make a comment, you're more welcome. Sure, Mr. Mayor. I won't take too much of your time, but thank you, Dr. Fountain. But we did meet before you today. I certainly wanted to isolate just on how it would impact our schools, uh, particularly the zone of Sims Elementary and Edwards Middle School. and. Rockdale County High School looking at capacity. One of the things I mentioned, and uh, I think Chris mentioned that I wanted to see uh, what the build-out timeline was. Uh, because we certainly, and when you look at uh, capital outlay improvements, whether it's new buildings or improvements to existing, they take advance notice. Uh, so we needed to know when groundbreaking would, was projected to be and what they were looking like as far as sheer numbers. So uh, we're still, uh, waiting on your decision, obviously, to move forward with our DOE uh, experts and support system, but uh, we've looked at it and we do have uh, some issues with capacity, particularly at secondary. Uh, 
when you look at our middle schools and high schools, we do have a bit of room uh, to take care of our elementary if there are young children involved. But as we mentioned with David and his counterparts, you know, we, we really don't know uh, what this, uh, you know, depending on whether it's single family or town home, who we're going to attract, what type of family. Do those family have, do the families have children or young children or older children? You know, those are just question marks that probably remain to be seen once uh, the actual growth uh, hits. So we're looking at it, uh, and certainly we do think that uh, it has potential uh, to impact our school system. So we want to be as involved as possible, which is why we met with them personally. So, right. Vince? Yeah, you look at any large development from a residential standpoint, and that's something that y'all do, right? Sure. It's a Sure. It's a sizable subdivision, a multiple subdivisions going up in areas. Of Certainly, areas. we look at we look at subdivisions uh, and, and, and and grows much much smaller than this uh, that would impact and have significant impact on uh, our classrooms and particular schools uh, in general. And uh, certainly, when you look at growth in any one particular area like this, you face the uh, possibility of. Uh, redrawing district lines, and that's certainly something that, as a first-year superintendent, is not something that I would uh, propose that we do at this time. But that is a possibility down the road uh, as the community grows uh, and as our young people um, uh, move into our county. We know that that's a possibility. So uh, we're we're attuned to it, and certainly we appreciate uh, your involvement uh, and your consideration of the of the school system. Right. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, Rich. Thank you, Wells. Sure. All right, any other questions? There's a lot. I think we generate more questions now than we did even two weeks ago. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of, John, kind of, I think we need to table this further. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I would say I do think we made a lot of progress in getting, getting a lot of things answered that need to be answered. But there, there are more things that need to be ironed out as well. And uh, were you going to speak to this? I make a motion here. If I might, go ahead. Uh, just, just recap, the Planning Commission heard this at their previous meeting, and they had tabled to July 11th, uh, which would be their next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, they had more questions. Did it seem to be good? Uh, and I, I think we've all uh, got more uh, information tonight than we had before. It looks encouraging. But uh, I know Mr. Roper's here. He's brought staff with him and that sort of thing. Uh, I know David has listened to the concerns of the community. They had their community meetings. Uh, they've made the effort to meet with various entities such as the work of the school system and the like. Um, I think it may be appropriate that, that if Mr. Broker chooses to, he might want to make a statement to the council tonight, but uh, obvious to me that uh, there's a little more work that needs to be done. Yeah, and I, I'd almost think, John, that we would want to my recommendation for you would be to table this until after the planning commission. I'd let them make their decision and then I'd come back after. But anyway, Dave, would y'all like to come up and make a comment? Opportunities. Uh, I think at this stage of the game, you know, um, uh, you know, tabling and making sure that we're uh, all comfortable with what we're looking at for our uh, the next steps, you know, rather than you know, rushing to you know, a series of conditions potentially that can impact you know, the next 20 years, you know, this project, such, you know, take the time, get the questions answered, and uh, do what we can to you know, share as much as we can. So I, I appreciate the process. John, Mayor, I would uh, move that. Mr. Mayor, if I could, I, I, in speaking with uh, Mr. Span earlier, I understand he spoke to Mr. Roper. Uh, just for clarity of the record, if I understand what Mr. Roper has said correctly, uh, he is almost recommending and suggesting that it be tabled. And since he is the applicant, if that's in fact his position, I'd like that to be part of the record just for, for, you know, as we move forward so it does not look like that we're you know, unduly delaying this process uh, over their objection, you might say. 
Is, is there any objection from 4A? Dave? No. Okay. All right. Duly noted. John? All of that in mind, I'd like to move that we table further discussion of this issue until our next reg regularly scheduled meeting following the Planning Commission's meeting, which will be on July 17th. Okay. Yeah, motion to have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Mike, you gonna, you going to handle this? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Mayor, as I recall at our last meeting, uh, there was uh, approval uh, of an ordinance that uh, a set up the dynamic by which the Rockland County Board of Elections would run and manage our uh, 2013 municipal elections with certain exceptions. Uh, that ordinance was approved. Uh, based upon that approval, uh, this is a contract that's been worked out uh, by Ms. Buchet, uh city staff, as well as the uh, elections department of the county. Uh, uh, by contract for them to manage that election for us. Uh, there's been a couple of slight changes from past years, basically uh, incorporating some uh, adjustments by state law uh, of some additional personnel that would be required. Uh, but uh, we have reviewed it and we are suggesting uh, that to make some real approval, we would ask that you approve uh, the agreement by between the City of Conyers and Rockland County for the conduction of the City of Conyers 2013 municipal election. All right. We have a motion. Have a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Right. John, you handled the last two. Yeah. For those of you who are new to city council meetings, the junior member of the council gets to handle <laughs> all of the really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> term of the appointment is a four-year term, July 1st of this year to June 30th of 2017, and I would so move. Right, we have a motion and a second. Second. All those say aye. 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 Item number three under new business is the appointment of Karen Benton to the Conyers Rockdale Planning Commission. The term of this appointment is a three-year term from July 1st of this year to June 30th of 2016, and I would so move. We have a motion and a second. second. All those say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, committee reports, Gerald. We'll start with you. Nothing this time, man. All right. Chris? Horse Park. Horse Park is hopping. It's yes. hopping. 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 Six shows, I think, this weekend, along with Buddy Buddy's going to be going on this weekend out there. Um, we got the bull run, Jeff. I told you. 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 I told you.
someone in place by the end of June, first of July, the latest is that pretty much the calendar that we're on? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's, it is, it's, it is moving. I hope to have somebody on board that's going to wear a bunch of different hats. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's all I got. John? If there's more business from my committee, I don't want to even. <laughs> you don't know there. But I would like to say, whenever that blow run thing is, I'm going to be out of town. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you signed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's too close to your neck and your other stuff. If you don't outrun the bull, you might have a special neck for a couple of them. So I'm going to pass on this. Yeah, but you, I didn't that's live all these years to get killed by a bull. <laughs> <laughs>
could, could, could hear you. You had just a handful of people here, unfortunately. But if everybody could see what you talked about for the 30 minutes, it would give them a much better feel for what this development can be. And it, can, it can be something really special if it's done right. So just want to especially thank you for the, what you've done. Thank you, Councilman. Good. I was just looking at this uh, tax matter thing. I don't know if you're trying to bring it up or not, but I was looking at a hundred thousand dollar house ten years ago with what it's worth today, and how much taxes the uh, city was bringing in with that house in uh, 2005, and what it's bringing in now. It makes it a very interesting reading, and uh, I mean it's unbelievable. So uh, I, I hope that, uh, and I know a lot of people here tonight are concerned and. and well, you should be, but uh, make sure if you can get a hold of one of these, you might need to do that to see the, the predicament that we are in here in order for us to maintain the quality of life uh, uh, as close to this quality of life as, as we've had in the past. Because uh, when I look at this thing, I mean, it, it, it's just shocking. It's just shocking the amount that came in 2005 compared to what. We anticipate coming in for what was a hundred thousand dollar house ten years ago, um, with the with the homestead exemption that we put in and everything. It's uh, it, it's really a shocking figure. So I, I'm hoping that, that people who really question the measure rate that we propose would also take a look at this so that they'll see what, what we're coming from. It's not just rental, David. It's it's the single family, the tax residential with homestead exemption. Fall below a threshold and gets below a certain threshold, there's zero taxes. Yeah. And that's where we are on the residential side. But I can assure you, this council, we are independent business people. So I, we, we get what you say, and I think the last five, seven years, just adding on what you said, Coach, is that you know, we have not gone up on taxes. We realize every dollar we take out is a dollar from economic development. So we, we get it. But it gets to a point, and I hope the tax digest comes in high. Where the four mill, but it gets to a point where you have to start looking at delivery of service. We're not growing government, we're now looking at delivery of service because we have not gone up in seven years. And that's really what decisions that have to be made. Are you going to cut public safety? Are you going to cut this? Are you going to cut that? Because there's no more cutting we can do on staff. Because we've done that through attrition over the last seven years. So it's, it's a tough decision, but we, we get what you're saying. We understand. It. And hopefully the digest will come in a whole bunch higher so there won't be any more limited amount of tax increases. Can I add to that? Just, this is not a funny story, but it's an actual true story. Coach, we took an actual house that what it was valued last year, what it's valued this year, not 10 years ago, but last year and this year with the reduction. And to collect the same tax we collected last year for that house, the military would have to be 52. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. And that, that's probably an, an exception, obviously an exception to things. But the point is, I mean, the amount of taxes that, that we're missing out on because of the overall and a reduction of property barriers is, it's real. I mean, it's out there. And we're not going to raise the military PG2 going around. That's not my opinion. Not on this one, anyway. <laughs> 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 no, that's all right. No, I'm talking to him. Chris, to follow up on that, um, the numbers are shocking, but I got to give our staff a lot of credit for being able to do and maintain and provide the services that we've been providing all these years with less and less money each year that we pay it. So, Tony and your senior staff, y'all do a hell of a good job for us, and I appreciate it. Thanks, can I? Sure. Since y'all brought it up, I, I had my chance. The uh, one thing about our, our digest, <clears throat> Conyers is largely a, a city of small homes, and those houses that are say $100,000 or less, the, the taxable values have decreased to the point where there's negligible or no tax being paid on them. And it doesn't matter what you raise the millage to, there's still no tax to be paid on those. And in fact, what you would have assumed to be the case and what a couple of people said was the case earlier no longer applies. And that is that the, the, the rental homes are not really carrying their weight. In reality, they don't get a homestead exemption, the owners of those rental properties, so they are paying more for the city services than many of those who own homes here. And that's that, that's just, the system just didn't anticipate that situation. Good point. Chris, Jerry? 
Okay, that, that just a little piggyback on that. We're very fortunate, and you know, I guess Vince and I particularly get to see firsthand what staff goes through being on the finance committee. And, uh, you know, Brad and the chief were over six feet tall until they went through Isabel's first year of presidency. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, I mean, they, they have done a, a fantastic job. Uh, I don't think that um, we can afford ourselves at all in that regard. I mean, they, they have taken what, what has been given to them, and, and where they could, they multiplied, and where they had to cut back, they cut back. And um, we're very, very fortunate. I hope people realize that. We are very, very fortunate to have the staff that we do. Final comment, uh, Marvin, baby, thank you all. Uh, this is really the birthday of a lady for seven, eight, nine, ten years. Like we've been talking about this for a long time in this 4A project. So uh, we're going to keep plowing through it. And uh, we got another seven weeks there. Public, if y'all got any questions, anything, y'all know how to reach us. And uh, there'll be another uh, planning commission meeting on this in another month. And then we'll follow up two weeks after that. So we got time to uh, get it right. And uh, all y'all's comments were, were valid as well, too. So. Uh, Again, thank y'all for attending as well. With that, we stand adjourned.